Unspeakable atrocities reported in Israel tonight where more than 1,000 people have been slaughtered. The White House confirming at least 14 Americans have been murdered and at least 20 Americans are missing. It's unclear if the missing Americans are being held hostage by Hamas or perhaps even dead. As Israel, one of America's closest allies, fights for its existence, Israeli soldiers are reporting scenes of horror and, as President Biden just said, sheer evil. Israeli Defense Forces, the IDF, are removing bodies of the innocent victims found in their homes where Hamas terrorists gunned them down in cold blood. An I-24 news report says that IDF soldiers discovered chilling sights, including dozens of dead babies, and that some of those babies were decapitated. And the report continues, quote, Many soldiers were called up for reserve service and could be seen actively consoling each other after what they had to witness. They arrived expecting the worst, but the scenes are beyond anything that one could imagine. Some soldiers say they found babies with their heads cut off, entire families gunned down in their beds. About 40 babies and young children have been taken out on gurneys so far. End of quote. One IDF major general told the media that, quote, it is not a war, it is not a battlefield, it is a massacre. Newsmax has not independently verified these reports. But meanwhile, in another town just nine miles away from the Gaza Strip, an orthopedic surgeon treating thousands of victims, telling the media he could never imagine the kind of brutality that he is witnessing. He said, quote, welcome to hell. Entire families are butchered in their homes. Family after family after family. It is hard to grasp. Families of an untold number of hostages taken by Hamas terrorists are pleading for the return of their missing family members. Senior correspondent John Hadi joins me from Ashkelon, Israel, just north of Gaza. This as Israel prepares for what is expected to be a ground invasion of Gaza. John? Yeah, well, Israeli forces uh, are amassed along the Gaza border um, in preparation of a major ground offensive. We are in the border city of Starot earlier today throughout the afternoon. Uh, we witnessed, we saw airstrikes. We also heard what sounded like machine gun fire. And what we were told was that there was a firefight between IDF troops on the border and Hamas uh, militants, Hamas terrorists, uh, as IDF forces continue to root out infiltrators throughout the villages to the south. We got reports that a Hamas uh, militant, a Hamas terrorist, was also captured here in, uh, in Ashkelon, possibly killed as well. We're working to confirm that. Uh, but this, as they're going through these communities, and not only clearing the communities, clearing uh, bodies, that some of them, those bodies have been booby-trapped, uh, vehicles as well. But as they're witnessing now the atrocities, and we're starting to hear these reports, and you went through that. And by the way, many of the, the reports are confirmed. There's a lot of reports that are unconfirmed as well. So people need to be aware of that as so much information is coming out. But uh, earlier today, uh, in response to the ongoing uh, airstrikes and cannon and a heavy artillery fire, Hamas launched a barrage of rockets. Uh, we witnessed uh, several being intercepted as they were literally coming over us in Starot. And then we also saw rockets being fired at Ashkelon here and even further north at Tel Aviv as well. Uh, this, as we're hearing, uh, the death toll continues to climb, as you mentioned. More than 1,000 people killed, uh, including at least 14 Americans, along with a number of other foreign nationals, French, British, German citizens as well. And at this point, we still haven't confirmed the number of Americans uh, that may have been taken among the 100 plus hostages as well. Uh, we're also hearing, and uh, Admiral John Kirby can probably speak to this, that U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is planning to travel here on Wednesday to meet with Israeli officials to discuss what they need. We understand the U.S. is providing more ammunition, more munitions in the ongoing fight. We're also getting word the U.S. is considering sending another aircraft carrier strike group, the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, to join the USS General R. Ford strike group, uh, carrier strike group, which is expected here on Thursday, Greta. John Huddy, thank you. And here's the president. Hamas does not stand for the Palestinian people's right to dignity and self-determination. Its stated purpose is the annihilation of the state of Israel on the murder of Jewish people. This is terrorism. So in this moment, we must be crystal clear. We stand with Israel. And we will make sure Israel has what it needs to take care of its citizens, defend itself. Earlier today, The Washington Post reported that Hamas terrorists received weapons and training from Iran and that they, quote, began planning the assault at least a year ago. 
The article goes on to describe, quote, key support from Iranian allies who provided military training and logistical help as well as tens of millions of dollars for weapons, end quote. As for Hamas, the terror organization telling the Associated Press Iran and Hezbollah had no role in the attack, but that they will join if Gaza is, quote, subjected to annihilation. National Security Council Strategic Communications Coordinator Admiral John Kirby joins me. Good evening, sir. And you have the second perfect role to be on tonight because as an admiral, um, you can help me with this understanding. What is the mission of these two aircraft carriers that are going, the, the Ford and the Eisenhower? What instructions are they getting? Well, at first, I want to uh, put this into some context. There are no plans right now for the Eisenhower to become the second uh, carrier off the coast of, uh, uh, of, the, of the eastern, in, operating in the eastern Mediterranean. Um, I think that's been a little bit of a garble in some of the press reporting. So right now, there's no plans for that. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, if things change, we'll certainly talk about that. But right now, it's really just uh, the USS Gerald R. Ford and her strike group. Uh, off the coast of Israel right, right now in the eastern Mediterranean. And they're there for one simple purpose, uh, Greta, and that is deterrence, to make it clear that we have vital national security interests in the region, and anybody, any other nation, any other terrorist group, any other entity uh, that wants to try to take advantage of this situation in Israel and escalate or expand the conflict, uh, this is a message to them not to do it. That is why the, the Ford is there, uh, to make sure that we're looking after and protecting our national security interests. You know, it seems to me that I mean, one of the issues is where um, does Hamas get its rockets? And either they come up with them themselves or they get them coming in through Israel, which I doubt, or they get them coming in through Egypt, which I doubt, and most likely they're getting, to, at least I would think, by sea, and they've got that Mediterranean coast of about 30 miles, and now we have the, um, the Ford headed there. Is one of the reasons the Ford there is to see, to try to stop a resupply of some sort? Right now, the mission of the, the Ford uh, and her strike group is really one of deterrence for any other actor in the region and to make sure that our national security interests are properly looked after. We have a robust military presence in the region right now. Uh, now that, of course, uh, is expanded uh, with the Ford and her escort ships there. Uh, there are no plans uh, at present to have the Ford or her ships involved in any sort of uh, blockade activity or, uh, or maritime interdiction activity uh, with respect to Hamas. All right. The report is that about 14 Americans are being held hostage. I know that for countries that we don't communicate with, that we don't direct communications with, for instance, to speak to North Korea, we go through Sweden. Um, do we have any communication with Hamas? Do we have some sort of proxy or via so that we can communicate? And how do we know that they're 14? Well, we know that the First of all, the, the number 14, again, this might, must be a garble. The number 14 is the number of Americans we know have been killed, murdered by Hamas. Uh, it is a very small number, a smaller number uh, of that uh, that we know of Americans that are being held hostage. But look, uh, Greta, we gotta, we got to be honest about this, that, that the possibility that there are additional Americans being held hostage is very real. So right now we know of a very small number, a handful, uh, but that number could rise. So that's the numbers thing. Now, as to your other question, we know that the Qataris do have direct communication with Hamas. We have a very good relationship with Qatar. Uh, so I'll leave it at that. But there, there are partners in the region uh, who, who can communicate directly with Hamas. All right, let me ask sort of an ugly question. Do we prioritize trying to get our Americans back or held hostage, or do we sort of work in conjunction with Israel? Or is it just, a, I mean, are we sort of, you know, one-dimensional, we're going to go get ours first? I mean, today, I mean, I don't know how we're going to get them. Maybe well, we'll negotiate, but however we get them. Right, right now, we, we don't uh, have uh, specific options that, uh, that we can explore because we don't really know uh, the size of the group of hostages. And you're right, it's not just Americans. It's not, and it's not just, frankly, Israelis. There are, we have reason to believe that there are other foreign nationals that could have been taken hostage here. So uh, it could be a very complex set uh, of, of a population there. What we're doing is we're working directly with the Israeli officials to try to get more knowledge, more context about where they are, where they might be, what kind of condition they're in. We have to remember that any recovery attempt is going to be complicated by the fact that this is an active war zone. It's not like they're sitting in a prison somewhere. Uh, this is an active uh, zone of combat, and so that greatly complicates any recovery options. But we're working our way through that. As you heard Jake Sullivan, the National Security Advisor, say today, 
There's nothing more important to President Biden than the safety and security of our Americans overseas. And we will work, as we have worked in the past, to get these Americans back with their families where they belong. Uh, but we have to recognize it's not just Americans that are uh, in this pool of hostages. Give me some idea behind the scenes, because we don't work inside the House. I mean, I assume that things are very different beginning on Saturday inside the White House in terms of who's, you know, people probably there around the clock. I mean, it's exhausting. You're looking at horrible pictures, um, you know, that, you know, once something like this happens. Can you give me just sort of a little, you know, little idea of what's going on and, and what it's like for the staff? Well, certainly the battle rhythm since Saturday has been accelerated here, not just at the White House uh, and the White House staff, but also at the National Security Council, where I work, um, uh, and, you know, a, a lot of activity uh, in terms of bringing, uh, up, bringing us all up to speed on information, understanding what's going on, getting uh, updates from the intelligence community, getting updates from our Israeli counterparts about what they're seeing, what they're doing, uh, what they're experiencing. Uh, so there has been, in the last 48 uh, to 72 hours, uh, quite a bit of extra energy here, a, a lot of that being applied uh, to, to working through this problem set, making sure that the Israelis are getting what they need. There's a first tranche of security assistance on the way right now. There'll be more in coming days, of course. Um, so just like uh, any, any other crisis, although this is not like any other crisis, but in a crisis mode, uh, you staff up, uh, you improve intercommunication inside the staff, outside the staff, will allies and partners, uh, and you try to keep that information flow going. Admiral John Kirby, thank you, sir, and good luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Greta.